Shalom, Israel. Most sign Christ blessed. Most sign Christ blessed. I'm Captain Mattathias. And to my love. Soldier Stefan. Hey, we are back with another 15 minutes with the captains. It's been a while, but we is back. I tell y'all all right. Y'all all right. But today, uh, today we're going over laziness kills ambition. Laziness kills ambition. All right, brothers and sisters. We got to be ambitious as Israelites, all right? First and foremost, seeing the condition and the, uh, the state of our people, their mindset, our poverty levels, the fact that we don't know who we are, there's no, there's no reason why none of us or any of us should not have the spirit of ambition, all right? First and foremost, give me uh, James chapter 2, verse 14, because if we say that we in this truth, our actions should show that, right? If we believe that... Christ came and died for us, that uh, God is black, Christ is black, the angels is black. We should show, show forth fruits to back that up. All right, give me that. Give me James chapter 2 and verse 14. Watch this. This is the book of James chapter 2 and verse 14. Come on. What doth it profit, my brethren, thou a, though a man say he have faith? Right, it says, though a man say he have faith in Jesus. Come on. And have not works. And have not what? Works. And have not works. Meaning what? You can talk a good game. But your actions should support what you say or what you believe in. Read the verse again. Watch this. Verse 14. Come on. What doth it profit, my brethren? Mm -hmm. Though a man say he have faith and have not works, can faith save him? It says, can faith save him alone? Jump down to verse uh, 17. Watch Ver this. Verse 17. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead. It is what? Dead. It is dead. Showing what? We must keep those works. What are those works? Give me the book of Exodus, chapter 18 and 20. All right. What are those works uh, that the scriptures is talking about? Let's read that. The book of Exodus, chapter 18 and verse 20. Go ahead. And, though, and thou shalt teach them ordinances. And thou shalt teach them ordinances. Go ahead. And laws. And what? Laws. And laws. Go ahead. And shalt show them the way wherein they must walk. Mm -hmm. And the work. And the what? Work. And the work. That they must do. And what is that work? God's laws. We must keep God's laws. So if you say you believe on Christ, what should come after that? What should show for? The commandments of the Lord. From there. Give me, uh, pull up a definition, actually, because today's title is Laziness Kills Ambition. All right, so we got to find out what ambition is. All right, uh, could you pull up that definition for us? Read that. This is Merriam-Webster's version of ambition. An ardent desire for rank, fame, or power. Or what? Power. Or power. It says an ardent desire uh, for rank, fame, or power. All right, so. Do me, the, do me a favor. Give me Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. Okay? So we should all have ambition. I mentioned that at the beginning of today's class. Why? Because if we say we want the kingdom of heaven, we have to understand what that means. The kingdom of heaven means rulership. It means power. That's what it means. Read what you got. The book of Revelations chapter 2 and verse 25. Come on. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Come on. And he that overcometh. And if he that overcometh, how are we going to overcome? First and foremost, what are we trying to overcome? Our sins. The only way we can do that is by keeping God's commandments. Read it again. Verse 26. Go ahead. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Uh-huh. To him will I give power. To him will he give what? Power. Power over what? Over the nations. Over the nations. That's why I said every last one of us should have ambition. So you brothers that come in and you don't desire rank, something wrong with you. Something is wrong with you. An evil spirit is on you. I'm going to just say it. It is what it is. Now, granted, we got some older brothers that come in amongst us. We got stuff to do for you. You understand? Everybody's not going to be the same. But if you don't want to come in here and put your hand to the plow, something is wrong. What something is wrong? is wrong. Give me What's Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6. So what have we learned today? We've learned what ambition means uh, the, by the definition and according to the scriptures. What are we striving for or what should we be striving for? Read what you got. 
The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 1. Go, uh, 6 and 11. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 11. Go ahead. Wherefore, set your affection upon my words. It says we should set our affection upon the words of God. Come on. Desire them. Do what? Desire them. We got to desire the word of God. Come on. And ye shall be instructed. And we shall be instructed. Jump down to 17. Verse 17. Go ahead. For the very true beginning of her uh -huh. is the desire of discipline. So we must desire what? Discipline. That is going to strengthen us to overcome so in the end we can have power over the nations. Read it again. Verse 17. Come on. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. The desire of discipline, brothers and sisters. We've grown up as blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans, as niggas, as spicks. And guess what? What's the difference between an Israelite and an African-American or a Negro? One has discipline and the other does not. So we must, as new babes, come in desiring wisdom, knowledge, discipline, so we can do what? Fight against the flesh. Overcome sin. Read verse 20. Verse 20. Go ahead. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. It brings to what? A kingdom. And in that kingdom, we're going to have power. We will have power in the kingdom. That's why we got to be ambitious. That's why we just can't sit on our behinds. We got to come in these doors and put in work for the kingdom. I hope you understand that, family. All right, from there, give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 4. Now, just one verse 4. Let me hear this one. Yes, sir. Proverbs 13 and 4. So today's title is Laziness Kills Ambition. Read what you got. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 4. Uh-huh. The soul of the sluggard. It says the soul of the what? Sluggard. The sluggard that moves slow, that doesn't understand things, always slow-footed. Never comprehends, don't get it. Not, they, and you, you, you speak to them, but you got 10 other people. Everybody else gets it except that brother, except that sister. The sluggard, sluggard, read it again. What is the wrong soul of the sluggard desireth and have nothing. They desire meaning what? Hey, man, I'm telling you, you know, I really want this new car, you know. But, hey, bro, hey, did you go to work today? Nah, I called out again, man. It's like, dang, ain't that like the third time? Yeah, but. I just had to t I had to tend to some things, you know. My mama's sick. You understand? These these are the these are the type of people who talk a good game. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get an MOV. Is like, brother? Um, uh, Tabernacles just passed. Go ahead and enroll. You know, right now is just not a good time. The hell is this? Give me Romans 13:11. What the hell you mean now is not a good time? This is the only time. The time is now. The time is right now. Read what you got. The book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 11. Come on. And that knowing the time. Mm -hmm. And now. And it, what? And now. And now. It is high time to awake out of sleep. It is now is high time to wake out of sleep. Ephesians 5 and 16. Ephesians 5 and 16. Brothers and sisters, we don't have all day. We don't have a thousand. No. The time is now. Stop making excuses. Read what you got. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5 and verse 16. Come on. Redeeming the time. Doing what? Redeeming, Redeeming the, time. the time. Take advantage of the time that we have right now. Come on. Because the days are evil. Because the days are evil. You don't know if life's promised to you the next day or the day after. So take advantage right now. Go back to where you was at in Proverbs 13. All right. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 4. Let me hear that one again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 4. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. The soul of the sluggard desireth and have nothing. Talk a good game, but never gets anything accomplished because they don't put forth the work. Go ahead. But, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. But it says the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Shall be made fat. I just want to get you a quick example. Give me the book of Jonah. All right, I need you to read a little bit faster on this one. Start at Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Many of you are familiar with this story. All right, Jonah being swallowed up by the fish or the whale, also known as the dragon. All right, uh, Leviathan, as uh, the bishop touched and the deacon went over. All right, read this for us, jo Jonah 1 and 1. The book of Jonah, chapter 1 and verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, mm -hmm. and said, Arise, go to Nineveh. So the word came from who? 
The Lord. The word came from the Lord. Give me John chapter 5, verse 37 real quick. Because remember, it says if you have faith and not works, that's not going to work out. So the word came from who? John 5 and 37. Watch this. Come the, on. The book of John, chapter 5 and verse 37. Uh -huh. And the Father himself, which have sent me, hath borne witness of me. Come on. Ye have neither heard his voice Ye at any what? time. Neither heard his voice at any time. So none of us, we never heard the voice of God Almighty, the Father. This is who? Go back to Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. This is Christ. This is that faith right here. Christ was speaking to Jonah and told him to do something. Let's see how Jonah moved. Read it. The book of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 1. Come on. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, mm -hmm. the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it. Come for, on. For their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish. But Jonah said, Now, nah, I don't want to go prophesy. I don't want to go do what you made me to do or what you called me to be. I'm going to go over here. Go ahead. From the presence of the Lord, uh -huh. and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish mm -hmm. from the presence of the Lord. So he decided to run away from the presence of the Lord. That's exactly what you slothful, sluggard, lazy people do. Wow. Because laziness kills ambition. You got to understand what you're doing. You are literally running away from the Lord. Message. Who decided to call you and when you could have been dead? That's what you're doing. Read on. Verse 4. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, uh -huh. and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Like, so like the ship was about to be broken. Come on. Then the mariners were afraid and cried, every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it on, on, on them, the, the sea to lighten it on them. But Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. Fast asleep. That's what sluggards do. Okay, come on. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Go ahead. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. This what? This evil is upon so us. So you got to understand, what are we reading in the scriptures? Jonah decided, you know what? Uh, I don't feel like uh, listening to the Lord. I don't feel like putting my hand to the plow. I'm going to go do my own thing. You got to understand, there is a judgment for your slothful actions. Understand that thing. Let's read some more. Know for whose cause this evil is upon us. Mm -hmm. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then said they upon, tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us? What is thine occupation? Come on. And where comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people art thou? Mm -hmm. And he said unto them, I am an Hebrew, uh -huh. and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, mm -hmm. which hath made the sea and the dry land. Uh -huh. Then were the men exceedingly afraid, and they said unto him, What hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. You see that? They knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. Come on. Because he had told them. Uh -huh. Then said they upon him, What shall we do unto thee? that the sea may be calm unto us, for the sea rocked and was tempestuous. Right, uh, and the sea rocked and was tempestuous. It was, a, it was a bad storm. Why? Because of the sin of Jonah, for being slothful, for being lazy, for not listening to the Lord thy God. All right, give me verse 17 and we'll move on. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, mm -hmm. and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. So at the end of the day, we know the story of Jonah. He ended up listening. But brothers and sisters, why not just do it the first time? Why extend the process? Why, why can't we just listen and hearken? All right? You're kicking against the pricks. What is wrong? All right, so instead of killing the ambition, just listen to what the Lord's saying. So let's get an example of that. Give me Genesis 17, 1. All right, so we had an example of the forefather being lazy and slothful, not listening to the Lord. Now let's get an example of one of our forefathers that did listen, 17 and 1. The book of Genesis, chapter 17, verse 1. Uh -huh. And when Abram was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Lord Almighty God. Same instance. All right, so the, the, the Christ is speaking to forefather Abraham. Go ahead. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Come on. And I will make my covenant between me and thee mm -hmm. and will multiply. 
multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Why? Because Abraham listened to the Lord. When he told him to get up and go, he did that. He wouldn't make excuses and try to go somewhere else and uh, disappear from the presence of the Lord. Come on. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Neither shall thy name any more be Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Come on. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Now, let's go back to Proverbs 13 and 4. So we just showed you two examples in the scriptures, okay? Hey, if you don't listen to the Lord, bad things will happen, but if you do, you will be made fat. You will be blessed. Read that again. The book of Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 4. Come on. The soul of the sluggard desireth and have nothing. And have nothing. Come on. But the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. Shall be made fat. It's your choice. But understand, if you got a lazy spirit, if you got a slothful spirit, it's going to kill all that ambition, and you're not going to inherit the power. You're not going to inherit the kingdom. All right? Give me uh, Sirach 22 and 2. All right? This just to show you how the Lord feels about lazy people. All right, Sirach chapter 22 and 2. The book of Sirach chapter 22 and verse 2. Go ahead. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dung hill. Of a what? Dung hill. S lazy people ain't shh. That's Wait, what the what? Bible's saying right there. Because why? Because everything is going to come crashing down if you put it in the hands of a slothful, lazy brother or sister. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Everybody's working hard, but this brother right here is lazy, is and he you? lets everything get destroyed. The hell is Give this? me that in Ecclesiastes 10 and 18. Okay? Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 18. Watch this, y'all. Am I making this up, or does the Bible say that? Let's read it. It's Ecclesiastes in the Bible 10 and 18. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. Uh -huh. By much slothfulness. By much slothfulness or laziness, read. The building decayeth. The building what? Decayeth. Uh-huh. And through idleness of the hands. Through idleness of the hands, not having a routine, not having a schedule. Come on. The house droppeth through. The house droppeth through. That's what the Bible's saying. That's why laziness kills ambition. All right, from there, give me the book of um Proverbs 6. Y'all know this one about the ants. Y'all know this. Give me Proverbs chapter 6, start at verse 6, we'll read down. The book of Proverbs chapter 6 and verse 6. Come on. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, mm -hmm. which have no guide over overseer or ruler, mm -hmm. provideth her meat in the summer. So, obviously, when it comes to the brain or the mental capacity of an ant compared to a human being, there is no comparison. But it's so bad, it could be so bad at times with lazy people. The Lord's saying, you sluggards, look at an ant who I've made less than you. Take note of how... He moves. Read it again from verse 6. Verse 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Mm -hmm. Which having no guide. Having no guide, no instructor. But we, but we have a guide. We have an instructor. Okay? Oh, watch this. What is it, 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 76? I think that's the one. Y'all all right? Y'all know what I want. Let me hear that. The book of 2 Ezra. Chapter 16 and verse 76. Mm -hmm. And the guide of them. And the what? The guide of them. That what? Who keep my commandments. So we got a guide. We have an instructor to keep us on task. You understand? But now let's go to the ant who has no guide. Who has no instructor to keep them on task. And let's see how they still move. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 6. Uh -huh. Go to the ant. Thou sluggard, mm -hmm. consider her ways and be wise. Come on. Which having no guide, uh -huh. overseer, or ruler. They still are able to do what? Come on. Provideth her meat in the summer. Provideth her meat in the summer. Come on. And gathereth her food in the harvest. Uh-huh. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? It says, how long are you going to stay asleep, O sluggard? Come on. When wilt thou rise out of thy sleep? When wilt thou do what? Arise out of thy sleep. Uh-huh. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. Mm -hmm. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Right. There it says, it says your poverty is going to come to you if you continue to be slothful. Mm -hmm. Everything 
that you're a part of is going to fall to naught. That's what's going to happen. Give me Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21 and verse 25. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 21 and verse 25. Uh -huh. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. You see, it says the desire of the slothful does what? Killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. And that shows you, according to the scriptures, laziness kills ambition. All right, from there, give me the book of Matthew 13 and 22. All right, brothers and sisters, you may come into this truth because you heard the good news. You were Israelite. God is black. Christ is black. The angels are black. Salvation is for you. But guess what? Over time, over time, your lust overcome you. And you eventually what? You fade away and become unfruitful. Watch this, Matthew book, 13, 22. The book of Matthew, chapter 13, and verse 22. Mm -hmm. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word uh -huh. and the care of this world. So you hear the words of God, but the cares of this world, your lust, come on. And the deceitfulness of riches uh -huh. choke the word. It does what? Choke the word. It chokes the faith. Wow. It chokes Christ. It, it chokes the word of God. Come on. And he becometh? Unfruitful. And he becometh unfruitful. All right, if you choke something for so long, you understand it's going to die. You That spirit, that fervent spirit that you had is going to fade away from there. Wow. Give me uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. I want verses 12 and 13. So you got to understand exactly what it is, brothers and sisters. You can't blame it on nobody but yourself. All right, read what you got. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 13. Uh-huh. But evil men. But what? Evil men. It says evil men. Go ahead. And seducers. And what? Seducers. 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 When you seduce, it don't happen overnight. It happens methodically, little by little Message. and little and little until the point day. where you're falling in the midst of that lust. Mm -hmm. Come on. Shall wax worse. And worse. So as we get closer to the end and closer to uh, the return of Messiah, we're going to see these things wax right? worse and worse and worse and worse. You may not have started off like that, all right, but the cares of this world, your lust of other things cause you to now become slothful towards the work of the Lord. Come on. Deceiving and being deceived. You deceive others and you yourself are being deceived, all right? From there, give me Ezekiel 13 and 10. All right, these type of men, this is what they're doing. They are false prophets that sit amongst us. All right, they come in one way, but they leave and they make the exit differently. All right, so brothers and sisters, let's make sure we govern ourselves according to these scriptures to make sure that don't happen to any of us. Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 13 and verse 10. Come on. Because even because they have seduced my people. They have what? Seduced my people. Saying what? Saying peace, and there was no peace. That's the issue. A lot of y'all are more caught up with your jobs than the work of the Lord. Say what? Because you think that America, you think that Babylon is going to continue to go on. Peace. Oh, oh, COVID, that was only for a certain amount of time. Come and you think now, that everything's cool. The gas prices kind of got regulated. You think everything cool again. No! Destruction is coming. Right. Thus saith the Lord. Come on. And there was no peace. And one built up a wall. And lo! That was his first 10. Yes, sir. Uh, still more. Still, still, okay, go yes, ahead. Sir. And one built up a wall. And lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it on that. Yes, From there, give me the book of Psalms 37 as we wrap up. As we wrap up. So, brothers and sisters, obviously, we shouldn't get caught up in slothfulness. Got to stay busy. Got to stay occupied. Like it says in Sirach 33, 27, don't go to it. Yes, All right? Send him forth to labor that he be not idle, because idleness teacheth much evil. Read what you got. Book of Psalms, chapter 37, and verse 4. Uh -huh. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desire of thine heart. Right, so our delight should be in the laws of God, and he'll give us that desire, that ambition to get the kingdom, the power over the nation. Sirach 6 and 37, and we'll end with Proverbs 13. Right, Sirach 6 and verse 37. Read that. The book of Pro Sirach, chapter 6 and verse 37. Uh-huh. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the Lord. Right, remember, that's the work. All right, when we read that in uh, Exodus 18 and 20, the ordinance, the law. So it said, let our minds be on the ordinances of the Lord. Come on. And meditate. And do what? Meditate. And meditate. Continually. Continually. In 
his commandments. In his commandments. Put forth the works. That's it on that? No, sir. Come on. He shall establish thine heart. He shall do what? Establish thine heart. Mm -hmm. And give thee wisdom at thine own desire. At thine own desire. And with this, Proverbs 13 and verse 19. So, brothers and sisters, understand that laziness kills ambition. So, if you're around lazy people, get away from them right. because they're going to destroy you. And if you got that spirit, be around people who are about this work. This Read what you got. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13 and verse 19. Uh -huh. The desire accomplished is sweet to right. the soul. So when you actually accomplish something, all right, ultimately we want that grand prize, which is the kingdom. But along That's the way, right. we should have little accomplishments here and there. You know what? I'm overcoming this sin. I was able to go travel over uh, across the seas. I was able... Uh, to break down this scripture, I passed the soldier's exam. I passed the tens exam. You understand? Little uh, pri um, rewarding uh, achievements along the way. Read it again. The desire accomplished is sweet. It's sweet when these things take place in your life. Go ahead. To the soul. Uh huh. But it is abomination to fools to depart from evil. There you go. So how you know if you're foolish? If you remain in your slothful, lazy ways. And with that, we say shalom. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Oh!